You enter the throne room, weapons at the ready. There before you, sitting on his blackened throne, is the warlord. He points a crooked finger at you, and in reply, the sound of dozens of skeletons can be heard as your foe's undead army shambles toward you. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about enemies, and in particular, skeletons. Now, a common trope in most role-playing games is the concept of good versus evil, and you can't have great heroes without great villains to oppose them. So, we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make some skeletons. Let's get into it. So, using our handy stencil here, we're going to be tracing out our skeleton. And I want to have him in the arms raised pose, because I kind of want to make a uh, kind of intimidating looking, aggressive skeleton minifigure for this video. Getting the outline traced out, and you can fill in the details. Um, when you're building a skeleton, I mean, obviously you want to make sure that it's humanoid in shape. Um, having a basic understanding of uh, what a human skeleton is. I mean, if you have to look at pictures online or if you have an anatomy book, it is uh, definitely helpful to get the basic idea across when you're creating um, a skeleton. Um, filling in the lines with the black pen gives you those fine details you need, especially when you're doing the skull, um, the eye sockets and the nose as well. I mean, having basic understanding of anatomy of a skeleton is important just for aesthetics. Now we're using a brush pen here to kind of just fill in some of the other details around where the areas you don't want to try to cut into um, it just kind of helps to give a background fill. We're going to use a stencil here to put a round shield on his arm. I probably made the shield a little too far past the elbow but it it's going to look great at the end anyway. I'm going to give him a scimitar here. Like I said, when you're making weapons, it doesn't have to be straight. You can fix that when you get to cutting. And when we're going to add some coloration, we're going to do a little just bit of a, a brush with the pencil on it, just to give it that, um, that bleached skeleton look. Add some discoloration just to make it look like it's old and ancient and worn and it just gives it this intimidating look. After we get this guy cut out we're just going to be uh, adding some more details with the color. Um, one mistake I made was uh, forgetting to color in the sword and shield before I cut it out but that's not a problem. It's an easy fix. Be adding that to our skeleton here. And if you really want to, I, I prefer my weapons. If they're in the hands of a skeleton, I like to give them a rusty look just to make them so much more intimidating and ancient looking. And so I go over that with a, a bronze or a, a beige colored marker just to give it that rusty, ancient look. And then do the same on the back side, just like normal. Once again, just some basic anatomy and some pictures online will help you give a basic idea across of that this isn't a skeleton. Throwing in some more details, gonna be shading in with the black pen again, just to fill in those areas that we didn't cut out. It helps that skeleton figure just pop out a lot better. Adding some more of these ancient rust tones, giving it an ancient, terrifying look. Now all that's left is to bend this guy into shape using our tweezers. If you make the if you manage to make the neck small enough, you can twist the head into some cool positions, getting the legs and the feet into place so that it can stand on the base, adding our tacky glue to the feet, and using the tips of the tweezers to mount the feet onto the base. And after giving him plenty of time to dry, he's ready to join the rest of your skeleton army on the battlefield for your heroes to vanquish. Are your heroes ready to face the army of skeletons you have unleashed? 
that's for them to decide. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll catch you next time. Until we meet again.